Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Noor Networks. In this tutorial, we will be configuring Nginous Wireless Access Point. The model number which I will be using for the configuration is AWS 355. So guys, just add a note that whether this model is AWS 355 or any other model, the configuration steps will remain same. So this is how your Nginous AWS 355 Access Point looks like. Guys, the topic which we are going to cover in this tutorial will be we will be having a basic overview of the Nginous wireless access point and then quickly we will be going ahead with the configuration. This is the front view of your access point where starting from the right, the first LED you can see is the power LED over here. Then comes the Ethernet activity ethernet port LED. once you are connected to the ethernet port this will blink then you have 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz leds over here this is the back view of your wireless access point as you can see the mounting uh, uh, over here you can do the mounting on the wall or on the ceiling uh, when you open the box at that time you will find the mounting kits along with it and you will find the power adapter and the ethernet cable so what I am going to do now to proceed with the configuration is I will be giving the power uh, to the access point. This is the power point. I will be connecting this power adapter and using this Ethernet port, I will be connecting it to my laptop to do the required configuration. So guys, basically the default IP address of your access point is 192.168.1.1 and the default credentials are admin admin. Very first thing what we are going to do is we will be configuring the laptop IP address using this network IP. Let's say the IP address, the default IP address of your access point is 192.168.1.1. So we will be configuring a laptop with 192.168.1.x. So the last octet can be 10, 100, whatever you want, except 1.1. Let's go to the network settings and configure the IP address. For the ethernet as you can see i have the ip address 192.168.1.10 i will be using the same ip address and the subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0 gateway is not required for now we will leave this as it is now quickly we will be accessing our access point which i am connected to through my laptop using this default ip address let's open the browser And I will just put the IP address 192.168.1.1, hit enter. Coming to the login page, I will be putting my default credentials admin admin and I will log in. As you can see, you have the device name, serial number, it is showing the device status, the MAC address, current, current local time and all. So let's begin with the basic configuration and I will show you how you can do the configuration of your wireless access point. So guys, to proceed with the configuration of the wireless access point, we will be going to the wireless option under network from the left side. Going over here in the wireless, you can define the device name. If you want to change the device name, you can change it. Let's give the name of the device as lab web one for example. And then coming over here, the operation modes you can define like what kind of operation mode you need since it is access point so there won't be any operation mode it will be access point then the wireless modes are there the channel empty mode this all things you can keep it as default the main thing what you have to do is you have to set the ssid and the password for your wireless access point so as you can see you can enable multiple ssids from here by just in, uh, checking this box uh, for this in this lab what we are going to do is since we are only looking after the basic configuration, we will change the SSID and let's say we will give the name as lab wireless access point as the SSID and we will enable the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz both. Thereafter, we need to do the security setting. You will click on edit button over here. Over here, it is asking for the SSID. We have changed the SSID backside. Let's say over here as well. Give lab wrap. 
then you have option that hidden SSID whether you want to hide the SSID in that case manually you will be adding the SSID and then the password so we'll keep it as default we want to broadcast the SSID that's why we will keep this as default client isolation we will see in the coming time we are isolation also we are not looking since we are only looking after the basic configuration which will help you to act, gain the internet access through this wireless access point then finally comes the security mode if you will see there are security modes like WPA2, PSK, WPA2 Enterprise. So what are these modes? I have uh, uploaded one tutorial explaining the different security modes, their advantages, their benefits, what are their drawbacks, everything is explained in detail. I will be adding the link to that particular tutorial so you will have a better understanding on the security modes or, or you can say a wireless security. Let's choose WPA2 PSK for uh, this and then you will define the passphrase that is your password you can define any password as per your wish and better just choose the strong password just for showing purpose i am putting one two three four five six seven eight nine keeping the rest of all settings as default you can simply click on save button over here over here you can see when pop up waiting for changes should be applied whether you want to apply click on apply button over here and it has started to apply the changes you can see it is showing what all changes you have done what section you have removed all this details it is showing over you over here and it will take some time to apply these changes on this device so guys the changes are applied over here now uh, let's have the overview of some other things as well when you go into the basic setting see guys the configuration is done the, what you need is you have to define the SSID, you have to define the password for your wireless. You have done that, right? And you have enabled 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, both the options over here. Now, the configuration is done. We will assume that this access point, definitely you are going to place below the router. Let's say, for example, you have a ADSL connection at your home. Uh, you have a router on which the service provider connection is terminated. You were the requirement that you need to expand your network to the entire home or office where the reachability is not there where the connect uh, i mean the signals are not strong so what you did is you have taken one ethernet cable from the LAN port of your adsl router and connected to this access point so basically you have a dscp configuration done on the router so what you are going to do is over here you will keep the option as ip network setting as dscp so now what will happen, the router which is above this, it, the device will take the IP address from there and the clients which are connected to this particular access point, even though those clients will take the IP address from that DSCP pool of the router itself. So you don't need to do any kind of setting over here unless and until you have to configure a static IP address. In most of the cases it will be DSCP, I would say almost cases it will be DSCP only. Moving further, let's go to the management option over here. The advanced, you will find a controller setting in the coming tutorial when we will be looking after the wireless LAN controllers and all. At that time, we will look into this, how the controller address is defined and how you can check the status and all. SNMP setting will also be covered in the same tutorial where we will be doing the wireless LAN controller option. Email alert is the option over here. If you will see, you, you can define the email alerts. You can enable the email alert from which address you want to send to, and to which address you want to send what will be the subject and for the email account configuration the administrator username password or the service account username and password SNMT, SNMT server SM, sorry SMTP server and security may, may mode thereafter you will be sending the test email to check whether the test email is received if it is received which means that uh, your configuration is working perfectly and then you will be applying the setting of course this option also we will be covering in the coming tutorials then going to the time zone over here you can define the time zone either manually you can set the date and time or you can automatically get the date and time from the NTP server if this is reachable over the internet then after you can see the time zone you can change the time zone whatever you want as per your requirement as per your time zone 
then you will see a Wi-Fi scheduler option. You can even schedule your Wi-Fi like auto reboot setting. Status is disabled by default. You can enable it and you can say that on which days do you want to do the auto reboot with, uh, on this particular day or on all day at what time you want to do. You can do that. Then comes the Wi-Fi scheduler. Uh, over here, you can simply enable the scheduler and you can say that when you want the availability and when you don't want this to be available that you can define the schedule table over here. Either you can customize for a specific day or for a specific time slot uh, on every day. Then of course you have a tool option over here from where you can ping, trace, do an NS lookup, you can do a speed test, device discovery and so on. And finally the last options which you have is under the system manager account. This is the place where you can change your password. If you remember the default password which we have entered was admin. The username was admin and the password was admin. You can change that password from here putting the current password as admin and then you can define your own password and finally verify the password apply the setting over here you can upgrade the firmware guys uh, while talking about the upgrade in the firmware i will be showing you upgrading the firmware in two ways the first way in the next tutorial what i am going to do is i will be showing you how you will be upgrading the firmware from the access point itself and then when we will be covering the wireless LAN controller tutorial over there, I will show you that how you will be upgrading the firmware through a wireless LAN controller for the connected access points. And finally comes the log option over here. So guys, over here, you will find the system logs, the remote log you can enable, the traffic logs you can enable or disable. You can define your log server IP address and on which port it is going to listen and simply you will apply the setting to enable logs to hit on your log server so guys that's all about the configuration and the basic overview before we conclude i will be showing you the access point which we have configured the name lab web should be reflecting over here and you can see now it is reflecting so finally once this is configured what you're going to do is you will be removing the ethernet cable uh, from the laptop and simply you will be connecting it to your router from where it will take a DSCP uh, IP address over a DSCP and the clients connecting to this particular access point will also be taking the IP address to the router which is above this access point and uh, coming to the monitoring part when you will go to the connections over here you will see the list of devices which are connected to this access point it will be bifurcating the devices which are connected on 2.4 and which are connected on 5 gigahertz and this will be shown over here guys that's all about this tutorial in the coming tutorial we will be looking after the standalone firmware upgrade then we will be going ahead and doing the wireless LAN controller configuration we will be managing uh, the access points through the wireless LAN controller and that's how we will be proceeding further thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel yet please subscribe it now and do share with your friends